Welcome to Curseaholic. My name's Evan, and I'm with my favorite piano player, Heiko. Hello, beautiful people. So before we get into today's topic, here's a quick rundown on how the podcast works. Each episode, one of us comes up with a topic they're curious about and reveals it live to the other person in the hopes to spark a deep discussion and further our knowledge of the world around us. Yes, sir. Happy to be back. Hell yeah. Further my knowledge for 2022. Yeah, that's the goal, right? Always <laughs> expanding our minds. New year, new expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that as my 2022 motivational uh, uh, you know, quotes. <laughs> to remind yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's good. So how were your holidays? How was... Uh, good, good. All right, you know, yeah. past it. Uh, I'm here now. <laughs> you fasted? No, I like passed it. Like, oh, okay. You, know, <laughs> you passed went, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We went over it. It's done. Yeah. The expectations are over. Yeah. Everyone's settled. Yeah. Family time is always interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, today I wanted to address a certain topic that you're probably familiar with. You might have an idea <laughs> what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Any guesses? I mean... I don't know. Honestly, you haven't given me a lot of hints this time. Okay. Yeah, I told I told Heiko <laughs> when he came up with the theme of the, like the piano theme that we play every t- podcast, that it would be something that everyone has, but it's difficult to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, that's the mood he gave me. That was the mood. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll it, try to come up with. Yeah, something. it's not much of a mood. It's more like a, uh, yeah, like a short description Just of a, what we're going to be yeah. talking about. Okay. So before you know, we get it get into it for real i'm just mm. gonna read you a quote and i guarantee you just by like the first sentence you're gonna know what we're gonna talk about oh yeah but don't say anything until i read the whole thing How about that okay so i don't like oh i know what it Ex- is exactly okay okay you ready i'm gonna guess it that easy you're gonna guess it 100 <laughs> percent. okay all right, <laughs> all right go ahead all right here we go so the hub of the pni system is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal nexus the hpa axis it is through the activation of the HPA axis that both psychological and physical stimuli set in motion the emotional centers known as the limbic system, which includes parts of the cerebral cortex and also brain structures. If the brain interprets the incoming information as threatening, the hypothalamus will induce the pituitary to secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone. The adrenal medulla manufactures and secretes the flight fl- flight fight hormone, adrenaline, which immediately stimulates the cardiovascular and nervous systems. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, right? yes. At first, I wasn't sure. I'm like, what is this going at? And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So no, you want to reveal the topic? Well, yes. I guess we're going to talk about stress. Yeah. Okay. So... We wanted to d- talk about <laughs> stress last year as a standalone topic, mm. but now I have a better context for it. So, oh, okay. okay. So just a little b- backstory. Yeah. Heiko, during the Christmas break, bought me um, a book mm. that I'm going to review. Oh, that's what you have in, in the, the bag. bag. I didn't go. guess. Oh. <laughs> ah. All right. Just give me a second to pull this out here. Yes. All right. So for those that don't know the book, here it is. So it's called When the Body Says No uh, by a gay... Gabor uh, no. Mate. Gabor. Gabor, Gabor Mate. That yeah, that's how you say it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wasn't aware. <laughs> that's okay. Well, there you go. So basically, the book talks about the cost of hidden stress. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of diseases and illnesses out there that we think are not necessarily attributed to stress, but they are. And a it's, lot, it's yeah. a major factor in the <clears throat> onset and the, you know, just how they start in general. Mm hmm. And it's always like an underlying issue that not many people take into account, but it is there. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a book, yeah, just to give some context that I've read many years ago and mm-hmm. that I found really fascinating and very eye-opening. And, you know, I thought I'd give it to Evan as a Christmas gift. And yeah. I think you've gotten a lot from it. But I think this will also be like a refresher for me. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Okay, it's so been it's been a while. A while. Yeah, I don't know it's been that long. How long has it been since I mean... Read? since like i maybe read it in like 2017 oh a couple years back okay yeah so basically that's what the book discusses in general uh just the causes of hidden stress uh what we're not seeing about 
the onset of diseases in general mm -hmm. and how it's always kind of you know um pushed back by a lot of doctors and not really looked at and it's, it's always kind of disregarded in general yeah the, yeah just a lot of people in general don't put the importance on you know managing stress and people think you know in our busy modern lives oh it's okay we're always stressed everyone's stressed work life family that's how it's supposed to be but it's not you know and that's what brings about a lot of diseases that people just don't understand where they come from but exactly from this yeah so we're gonna get into it but before kind of getting into it you know we're just gonna um talk about you know in general what the book's about we kind of you know discussed this already yeah sure so you know let's go over some personal impact and mm. how i kind of find this book relates to me and maybe why you decided to buy this book yeah um so yeah on a personal level i hate making this about me but you know it's my no, it's my okay. topic, topic my podcast <laughs> i decided to do what i want makes so. sense it's all right go ahead uh yeah so you know i have this issue like with allergies sinusitis and it kind of happened it kind of started after like a stressful period in my life around 2016 mm. um so like when i was younger i never had this issue at all like i had maybe a little bit of allergies and um you know post nasal drip very little but then 2016 you know i had some things happen during that time and then soon after that maybe like a month this symptom started okay like it was like i can't say it's 100 percent be related to stress but you know looking back kind of adds up a little bit yeah it's uh it's an interesting coincidence yeah it really is yeah um and also you know stress is something that kind of builds up over time right it's not something that you know you could have one event that might change everything it could also add up throughout years and years mm -hmm. and if you you know bottle up all those emotions all the time then something could happen all of a sudden yeah yeah so so that's why well this book in particular talks about chronic stress exactly the stress that is hidden that you don't even feel that you have it but it's just there very yeah. subtle yeah there's a distinction they make in the book where i think it's acute stress versus chronic mm -hmm. acute is kind of like the stress that you kind of you know you feel like on a day-to-day -day basis but you don't you know overreact to that stress uh stimulus whereas chronic stress is something that you know people don't really handle too well and it kind of you know it kind of disrupts their everyday life mm -hmm. basically yeah i don't know for where i was at on that spectrum <laughs> like well maybe the initial period of that stressful you yeah know, exactly it was acute and then maybe it still lingered exactly um yeah it's hard to tell it's difficult you know people can't really diagnose themselves and exactly exactly you know. yeah so i don't know if you had similar experiences i i mean yeah yeah obviously you know different things family or whatever uh yeah. school um but i mean you know thankfully you know i'm you know thankful that i haven't had any sort of autoimmune or allergies or other sort of diseases that have come up you know i'm still relatively healthy yeah but you know shouldn't take it for granted exactly um and it's interesting because um what i read in the book what i'll you know spoiling the rest of the podcast <laughs> and jumping ahead too much i read that well the book mentions that allergies are also kind of like a byproduct of stress just because um the stress basically compromises your immune system you know kind of um it makes your body overreact to certain things it shouldn't be reacting to essentially yeah goes on overdrive exactly yeah so you know let's say there's an allergen typically you wouldn't necessarily react to it too much but since you're already compromised from the stress then your body doesn't really know how to interpret it, that allergen and it's gonna overreact basically um so yeah makes so i guess that's kind of maybe what's happening to make sense yeah a little bit yeah. yeah um yeah and also you know without making this all about me hmm. Uh, the world is going through some, you know, interesting times right now. Uh, it's uh, it's not been the easiest two years for anyone. I know we it's kind of like we talk about this a lot, but yeah, with COVID, yeah, 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 I know. Well, yeah, that has been like a huge amount of stress for everyone in the world, really, um, to you know varying degrees. But I think you know, I think I think this topic everyone can. Uh, oh, okay, now I get it. Everyone has it, but can't get rid of it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, stress is just something you can't avoid in general, right? Yeah, it's to learn to manage and 
yeah yeah to to not let it overwhelm you and then just you know sink into it yeah exactly so yeah it's is it's gonna be there it's never gonna go away but we just need to know how to manage it in a positive way i guess yeah, yeah. all right so that's for the personal impact so now let's look at some of the main point points the book discusses mm -hmm. so yeah like i mentioned stress is a common factor for the onset of multiple diseases and the book mentions so many diseases that it's you know tied to but i think there's even more than that like it's but obviously the book can't name all of them no but i mean just the sheer amount of diseases that it can you know not cause but not cause but just increase the likelihood exactly is you know it's uh, it's insane it's insane yeah, yeah. so yeah let's i'm gonna just name a couple of the diseases mm -hmm. discussed in the book it's not all of them but some of them so cancer which is you know any, yeah any type of cancer any type of cancer can will get, get exasperated by stress als um ms so multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. alzheimer's disease ulcerative colitis crohn's disease reflux disease i put in caps because that <laughs> relates to me again um, oh yeah so they literally talk about that in the book okay so what is it reflux? reflux disease just you know mucus build up and you know oh, okay. coughing in that sense okay yeah well is they it? call it GERD which is gastro uh, esophageal reflux disease okay but that's kind of what oh, I have oh that, <laughs> hit my mic there he, he hit the mic when he heard <laughs> the name of that disease he got scared I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah oh, I thought that had to do like with uh, acid stomach reflux. acid yeah but the thing is, is that what I have kind of feels like that so Does, oh okay yeah. so it's sort of okay yeah. so i was tested for that yeah came out negative but in my head it's like it's almost like that you just it's feel weird. mucus it just feels stuff coming yeah. up from so okay. yeah it's kind of nasty don't want to talk <laughs> about that detail. too much but yeah get into too many details about that it's all right uh also ulcerative colitis crohn's disease Crohn, crohn's disease excuse me my dad had yeah that's has both. both of those oh yeah he has crohn's both yeah Oh, damn. Okay, I didn't know about the Crohn's. Yeah, so, you know, these topics kind of struck home. Uh, these diseases kind of struck home a little bit. I think a lot of people can uh, relate to these yeah. diseases. I mean, anyone in our in anyone's family has at least one of these. Uh, cancer just being such a big yeah, one. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, so the book, you know, talks about the effects of stress by, you know, giving examples of certain patients with these diseases and kind of you know telling their stories mm -hmm. so that's kind of how you get to feel for all these people that had these problems and related to yourself as well yeah because some of these these stories told in the book are not so out of reach like it just seems like a guy that was stressed out and bam he got sick you know like super relatable it doesn't take much yeah it doesn't take much like some of the stories they don't sound like that you know insane like it doesn't sound like the guy had the worst life ever or yeah he, it just sounds like like they lived through war no or like none of that ptsd it just sounds like, yeah some of them of course their stories are a bit harsher more than others traumatic. but a lot of them is just kind of like wow okay you know he was going through a tough time okay and then he got sick and then he got yeah and but, that could happen to literally everyone right so yeah it's, i agree it's it's, it's a difficult thing to get around like stress is always going to be there and i guess this book kind of shows that in that sense right yeah i mean that's why that's why i read this and wanted to share with you because it r raises awareness on something that i think should be talked about more and dealt with more like disease in general it's just such a complex you know uh topic and everyone's body is like different but in a way we're all like similar you know it's a disease is a way of, of our body saying you know you know when the body says no when the body says no <laughs> that's exactly. a, that's why it's titled that way it's because your body is saying no i can't take it anymore and boom a disease appears you know it's your body it's like you know when you're driving a car and then, you know something goes wrong yeah. that's that's what it is yeah, you put just, too much stress on the car well it breaks down same as your body exactly no your body's like a car you need to <laughs> do its maintenance and oil it up <laughs> oil it up no but it's, it sounds stupid but yeah. it's kind of true you know like we we also have parts yeah that work you know exactly together so so yeah it's not that uh difficult to get sick from stress it's really not yeah i could vouch for that so <laughs> yeah exactly um, there you go i mean so yeah anyways on to the next little part here mm. so now we're going to start talking about 
you know, more like the technical part of the book, I would say, because the book is pretty like technical in nature since a, a doctor that wrote it, yeah. right? MD. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it really, what I like about that is that it really explains to you, you know, what's happening when there's a stress uh, response that you're going through, your body's going through, right? It's not just, you know, all your stress and this happens. Mm -hmm. Kind of elaborates on all the scientific um, components that go behind it. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so basically how does it trigger trigger physical illness? Well, there's kind of a a relationship between um, the psychological component and the physical. So that's kind of what the book is trying to portray for the most part, right? It's not just the physical part of your body is separate from the mind. It's kind of all, you know, interrelated. Mm, True. Um, So that's what it tries to explain for the most part. So, you know, one way that the the body will interpret stress is through the HPA axis, which is kind of what I brought up at the beginning. Before, yeah. But I was, like, confused. I was like, what is he talking about, HPA axis? (laughs) And then slowly I caught on. (laughs) Yeah. So... Basically, the HPA axis is like the hub of the body's stress mechanism. It's like a like a triangle or like a yeah, like it, the tr- holy tr- it, <laughs> yeah. It kind of is. It's you know, the stress response is kind of initiated through this system, hmm. basically. Okay. So what HPA is, just for you know some background, is hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal glands. Mm-hmm. Okay. So those are the three. You know, it sounds like Derek more plays more days speaking. <laughs> Do adrenal glands. <laughs> right, guys. Yeah. The pituitary glands. Hormones. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny, but, you know, um, it really is. Mm. It goes through that. So I guess, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it, these are like very innate, very like primitive parts of our brains. Yeah. Basically. So basically, the hypothalamus, the pituitary glands, and the adrenal glands, it kind of all work you know, they work in tandem, let's say. So one of them is going to release certain hormones and then the other gland is going to respond to that or release more hormones. And then eventually bad things are going to happen when there's too much stress and too much hormonal changes in the body. So basically the HPA axis just responds to the stressful stimulus that's um, going on the body or to the person's head or mind, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So let's let's just talk about the actual process. So um, the hypothalamus, which is like a gland in your brain, right? Yeah, I've I've heard about <laughs> hypothalamus so many times in so many different contexts. Yeah. yeah, it's all yeah, me too. Sometimes we don't get it. We hear it a lot, but we don't actually yeah. understand it. Well, in this context is pretty simple. So mm. basically, yeah, there's a stressful stimulus on the body, and then the hypothalamus is going to release. Um, a CRH hormone, which is corticotropin re- uh, releasing hormone. Okay. okay, it's just a type of hormone. Yeah. Then once the hypothalamus releases that hormone, it's gonna you know trigger the pituitary gland. Okay, to also release a hormone. Okay, which is the ACTH hormone. I'm not even gonna attempt to read this word because it's like the name of the hormone. I can't even see it, but <laughs> I think it's adrenal corticotropic hormone. Oh, that wasn't okay. too bad. That was okay. pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So that's the name of the hormone. And once that hormone is released by the pituitary gland, that's going to trigger the adrenal glands to release the bad guy cortisol. Oh, okay. Okay. So cortisol is released through this, this three process. step yeah. process. Yeah. Okay. So Why so many like glands, <laughs> so many glands, <laughs> so or so many parts of the brain. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a, interesting the way it works. Yeah. It's a very complex um, process, and obviously cortisol is one of those hormones that th- it's actually considered the stress hormone. That's what kind of like a nickname for it. Yeah, people, a lot of people know cortisol and hear yeah. about it, but I've known it does what it have is. functions. Yeah. I just didn't really understand the context, mm. but basically when cortisol is released to the body, it just kind of sends like bad, bad signals. So okay. you see there's like a negative feedback. Um, when oh, cortisol okay. is released, then kind of sends negative feedback, you know, it could cause all kinds of different uh, inflammation. It could cause all kinds of different issues that happen in the body. Um, what's another one I could think of? But, if, uh, but I think cortisol, like I'm not too sure again, but I think it also works with like when you wake up or when you... Yeah, cortisol levels I vary th- throughout the day. Too. Yeah, 
Like, probably when you wake up, I don't think they're that high. Like, I don't see why they would be. You know, you're just relaxed and calm. And no, I you know, didn't I know. eat too much either. I'm sure, like, there's other factors but, that release cortisol. Probably your diet, I guess. Oh, okay. No, I meant, like, it's not... It, it's all, Its sole purpose isn't, like, bad. I no, meant, no, like, no, it's it, not. It's it does not. have other functions yeah, 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 in the it body. Does, it does, 100%. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know. But, yeah, this hormone, I guess, you know, when it's released, you know, more than it has to because of stress response, it's kind of like that... Like exactly. the, the alarm bells, yeah. yeah. So yeah, maybe I didn't make myself clear in that sense, but cortisol is not necessarily, you know, the, the root of all evil. It's just kind of associated as like the stress hormone. Yeah. That when you're stressed, you will release more cortisol. That's what's released, and it you know raises the alarm. So yeah, basically, and which makes sense. That's why your body is going through inflammation and other reactions happening, and asthma, that, all kinds of things. Yeah, and if a lot of yeah. that happens, then something can get triggered and disease can happen. So, exactly. Yeah. So that's one of the, the processes that goes on, which is pretty interesting, to be honest. I had no idea hmm. this is how it worked. And when I read it, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Also, this graph, um, maybe when we... You know, yeah, I was like, the, did you make this? No, no, I found it online. <laughs> okay. um, and I found it really, you know kind of interesting to to see it visually because mm. when i was reading it i kind of understood and i was trying to put the parts together but seeing it visually i was like oh this makes a lot of sense just like a three-step process and um it yeah. helps to visualize yeah really helps to visualize we'll put this on the video yeah, we will <laughs> uh so yeah this is super interesting mm. hpa axis i'm gonna i'm gonna remember that when i, when I get stressed <laughs> <laughs> it's my hpa axis <laughs> my hpa is acting up <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's uh, really interesting, interesting for that for sure. So all this study about how, you know, kind of like the, the brain influences, uh, body responses to stress that, you know, generated so many new avenues for study and science in general, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, before it wasn't really understood that, you know, stress could be directly correlated to, to physical, uh, problems, but now, but since, you know, it's, um, after a couple years of study and discoveries, they understood that there is a correlation and there were more and more studies that came about from there. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to continue on that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you know, there, there are basically so many different systems in the body that work together and uh, contribute to the overall stress response. So basically... In, in your body, there's the endocrine system, right? That we just talked about, which is basically the system that controls uh, the hormonal releases in your body and different mm. functions. I'm not a doctor, so I don't really know all yeah. of them. You I've know been reading I'm... on my own uh, things that disrupt the endocrine system, but that could be... <laughs> that could be another <laughs> topic, topic for another yeah. day. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so, yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's the endocrine system, mm -hmm. then there's the nervous system and the immune system. Mm. Nervous system, right? It's pretty obvious, like your nerves, your and nerves, and how your body, your motor skills are driven by your your nervous feelings. system. Yeah. yeah, so many things occur with the nervous system, um, and then the immune system, which is basically your natural defense system of mm -hmm. your body. So all those three systems basically work together and are also affected by the stress response. It's kind of where I was getting to. Makes sense. So basically, um, you know, the understanding of these three systems and how they work together created this new study that you know most people refer to as pni because Damn, that's a the long name ass word is so intense that like no one wants to say it, but i'm gonna attempt to say it <laughs> they just, just like smush like 10 words yeah together. it's basically like three words put together so the name of the study mm, no i think science, it's actually sorry. four words oh okay but go ahead so the name of the science is psycho neuro immuno Immunoendocrinology. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Imagine playing this word in Scrabble. <laughs> How many All right, did I give you? your word is psychoneuroimmunoendocrinology. Uh, yeah, can you put that in a sentence, please? <laughs> <laughs> is that a word? Is and then, that, you know, people look yeah. it up on the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, imagine this at a spelling bee. Oh my god! Yeah, can you put that in a sentence, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, this PNI. Uh, science is the understanding of those three systems that we uh, mentioned earlier. So the endocrine, endocrine system, nervous system, and immune system, and how they contribute for uh, the overall stress response in the body. Okay. 
Well, I mean, it just it just makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> I just think like medicine in general needs to head into a more like uh, I guess this is the word homeopathic. Um, yeah, uh, I see what you mean. Or what, what's the word that like everything's like connected? I, I think it's homeopathic or uh, something homeo hmm. something. Um, Maybe not, but I can't think of the word off. Uh, offhand. I'm trying to think what the word. Yeah, I think it's homeopathic or maybe. Maybe not, but anyways, my my meaning is that medicine should go in the direction where you know many functions in the brain are interconnected, because I think you know the old school mentality mentality with like uh, you know discovering disease and like fixing things. It's like a car. You yeah. know, a lot of doctors think, oh, it's a car. Okay, your heart has a problem. Okay, let's, you know, try to tinker with it and, yeah. you know, fix it. But no, something else is, like, causing trouble to the heart. There's stress. There's, you know, pollutants in the air environment. Uh, so many things going Just on. Just other yeah. factors, your diet, your lifestyle. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, so, I see what you mean. Like, medicine, I find in general, it's very... It's, I, I find it's like almost like an engineering approach. You know how like exactly, engineering yeah. is kind of like, you know, fixed apart it's not working. It, uh, yeah, and, and then medicine, everything else will work. Yeah, and medicine is kind of the same. It's like, you know, it's always kind of like black or white. You know, uh, oh, you can't take this medicine with this. Or, you know, if the leg's not working, then it's, it's just the leg that's the problem. Nothing yeah. else is causing it or, you know. How could there be anything else, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I find the human body is like so complex that it's so hard to, you know, pinpoint exactly what's going on. But we still need to consider that there might be other things going on, other that, factors. That, that's right? what I'm saying, yeah. That's why, like, <clears throat> you know, I guess for you, like, people for you who got, like, these autoimmune issues, it can be kind of frustrating seeing doctors that can't really find an answer. Exactly. Because they're trying to be like, oh, your nose is fine. This is fine. This looks fine. Well, you're good. Know, you're worry. good. And that's the thing. I've been to so many doctors, and they're all like, oh, you know, you kind of have, like, a runny nose or something, or... <laughs> no, I don't. This, no. <laughs> like, takes over my life. Like, it's it's not as, you know... It does, it's not just okay, the cold here. Exactly. It's, it's not like... I just have a congested nose all the time. No, it's way worse than that. Mm. Once I went to do like a, an, a like a breathing test, I couldn't even do the test because I was so congested. You can't like, like it's, they were laughing at me. They're like, oh, why can't you do the test? It's just blowing in a tube. I'm like, yeah, dude, I can't blow in the tube because I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> can't you understand? Can't you understand? <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's why I mean it can be frustrating because yeah, a lot of doctors are trained in the sense of just you know working on specific parts of the bodies and you know a lot of doctors are specialized in a certain domain. You know, oh, I'm just a heart doctor. Yeah, but do you understand that you know a lot of things affect the heart? Exactly. You know? So I think that's why I'm more. Uh, I guess it's homeopathic. I guess the word. But yeah. Anyways. Uh, uh, that's well, the thing, you know, like. I don't like to say that, like, be your own doctor. Like, I, I don't. I find that kind of stupid. But like, <laughs> I feel like the person that suffers from a disease knows himself the most. Yeah. And a lot of doctors do say that. To be honest, like, my you know. dad when he went to see like his specialist is like, like, just, sorry, just to backtrack. Like, mm. my dad started doing intermittent fasting because it's it's helping his digestive system slow down a bit. Okay. And he's like, t then he, like, first he didn't want to do it because he's like, oh, my doctor would always kind of say no about it. Mm. And then at some point he just decided to do it. He went back to the doctor and the doctor's like, you know what? You know yourself best, so do what you want. <laughs> do what you want, so you know. <laughs> it's kind of, it, it, it is that. But that's bit. funny, yeah. I mean, because that's the thing. Doctors won't have 100% of the answers and... No. It's a tough thing. Like, you have medicine with this huge, you know, pool of knowledge on different body parts and different diseases, how different things interact. But each human being is like its own, you know, system, system of, you know, interworkings. And, you know, if each human had their own pool of knowledge, it would be huge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You know but, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, we have like a general... You like know, pool we know of knowledge about how... certain diseases and how, you know, general uh, responses and, you know, different conditions happen, but we don't know the case by case. Yeah, like, yeah, well, we can still predict to maybe a high degree and maybe help people overcome diseases, but some people it's just... That's what I mean. So we have a general understanding, yeah. but we, ne we don't have kind of like the nitty gritty, you know, for like each the, person. Exactly. We don't have like a case by case. Obviously, it's impossible it's what impo we're saying, but... You know, 
I don't know. Everyone I mean, is different. Who knows what the future of medicine holds? Uh, if there's a way of technology or something in the future that can just, you know, screen your body and just the metaverse. <laughs> <Call> the met <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, so today we're gonna be looking at this new technology. <laughs> so we're gonna know not everything about your personal info, but about your body and how it works, so that we can, uh, you know, prescribe you our own medicine, the oh meta medicine. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> You don't take it in real life. You just take it. <laughs> take it in the metaverse. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, if you haven't seen that episode, you should go watch it. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Uh, but yeah. So yeah. Um, so the body is driven by these different systems and they all interact. So, you know, let's mm. just look at this nice little diagram again because a picture is worth a thousand words. right? <laughs> so okay. here we go. Not really much of a drawing, but kind of just just ties. encapsulates everything yeah so the nervous system the endocrine system and the immune system they kind of all work in tandem and whenever one of them is affected it affects the other ones right and whenever one of those um system you know takes a hit then there's a response a feedback again to the brain and the brain you know interprets that information as you know what do i do to this new threat or hmm. um yeah different change in the body it's like a family, you know, it's yeah. like one person is sick. Everyone's like concerned what's going on. It's kind of that, you know, yeah. um, it's true. So for example, if there's a hormonal change, then the other systems kind of got to like react accordingly. Like, oh, why is there this hormonal change? What should I do on my side to compensate? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I th the endocrine system controls so much. I mean, they're kind of like the messengers. You know, hormones are like, okay, activate this, close this, exactly. start this. And if it goes, you know, an overload or sends like these weird mixed signals, then the other systems get confused. Yeah, they get confused, exactly. Mm. So, and this obviously could be terrible because, you know, for example, our immune system, let's say, you know, that could be lowered or it could be less efficient because of different hormonal changes in the body and then you know we could get sick from anything right um mm -hmm. the covid the, <laughs> the, anything yeah just become more vulnerable yeah. to, to disease in general exactly so <clears throat> you gotta you gotta be mindful that you know stress you might not be aware of it necessarily but you because a lot of it is happening behind the scenes kind of you know what i mean like you could exactly yeah but also kind of something you're not aware of you know like these hormonal changes changes mm. like how do you know what's happening there yeah yeah you that's don't. a different uh, part but um yeah exactly. the hormones yeah. Oh, people have no clue yeah and, and the book kind of explains that where there's different types of stress as well the the stress that we kind of feel on a day-to-day -day basis that they, they refer to it as tension so the stress that you feel, you know, let's say your heart, you're like, you, you know, know yeah, yeah. You kind of feel you're fuming and you're upset and your heart's racing and you, you're sweating maybe like depending on the situation. You but then there's the other types of stress that are kind of, they call it internal stresses hmm. where it might, you might not receive the biggest stress response, like, you know, tension wise, but the internal stress could also be happening at the same time. And those internal stresses uh, relate to these, you know, uh, systems. So the, you know, you could have hormonal changes that are going on that you're not aware of. Your immune system could be affected that you're not aware of. There's so many things that could happen. Oh, okay. In that sense. Oh, okay. Okay. I get it. Like, uh, like stresses on the parts of your body or systems, systems. That, that just you're, you're not feeling it exactly. physically or so you do, consciously. Just because you're not feeling tension does it mean that there's stress that's there not any going stress. on? Yeah, exactly. But I guess that's the chronic stress part. The tension, the tension part. No, the the one oh. that you don't feel. Well, not necessarily. Hmm. All of those types of stresses are there, so you might not think there's a stressful situation going on in your life. Okay. But you know, deep down in your physiology, that there, there is there potentially could be a change depending on the situation. Even though you okay. think it's not the most you know stressful or uh, tension creating situation there could it's be some so stress that's caused that's internally internally okay and that's kind of scary because that's you have no control that's the over. one that yeah yeah me, well, yeah me too so you know i get worried like am i getting stress from something here or exactly and you got to be know. mindful about it you know you got to kind of pay attention to what could be a a stress triggering situation even though even though you're not, not conscious yeah you know of it yeah because exactly. sometimes you know you might you might go about your day and uh 
I don't know, like uh, someone calls you and be like, hey, man, are you ready for tonight or something? And then you're like starting to think about it. Or, yeah, you're like, oh, man, I want to go to this party. Kind of like anxiety. Just, yeah, or, part, people I don't want to see. Yeah. Or, you're like you feel okay, but in the back of your mind or internally, it's like uh, exactly it's like it kind of disturbs you. you a bit, yeah. right? And that's kind of what you got to be mindful of. Okay, okay. Obviously, like don't be paranoid about this shit. You know, like don't <laughs> you know? Because obviously, overthinking is a type of stress it's, as well. It's gonna cause exactly. Yeah. Just be mindful that something that may not seem super stressful could actually be causing some internal uh, changes. I guess. I guess the best way is to face it. You know. Like, yeah. like, just, yeah, just be mindful and be like, hmm, you know, does this situation, you know, rise something out of me? Does it make me, you know, kind of like get on edge a bit or yeah. start thinking about it? Oh, that might be a possible, you know, stress Trigger. response. Yeah, exactly. So that's this PNI thing is pretty interesting, mm -hmm. I find. And it's really, it helps to understand what's happening in the back end and what's happening when, like, behind the scenes, basically, right? So, yeah. So now that we kind of understood um, what systems play uh, a role in the you know the stress response of the body, now we can look at maybe some case studies that the book discusses. Okay. So um, the first one is cancer, mm -hmm. which I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And I thought it would be important to mention it because cancer affects so many people around the world. I mean, I've heard you know that almost like fifty percent of people. Or forty five percent of people get cancer. Yeah. Like some sort of cancer yeah. in their lifetime. Well apparently most people have cancer and they're just not aware of it. Or they just yeah, that too. Like there's cancerous like the book mentions that where there you know, there are cancerous cells that are created all the time, but some of them don't become malignant is Mal the word. Yeah. Malignant the, 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 they just the stay they benign. Use. They stay benign and yeah. yeah. Nothing happens. Like for example, a good example of that is testicular cancer. Mm. A lot of like most men, uh, no, sorry, no uh, prostate, prostate cancer. Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. <laughs> prostate cancer is one of them where lot most men will develop cancer cells in their prostate, mm -hmm. but not all of them will um, necessarily develop tumors and and, dangerous and they would cancers. spread. Yeah, yeah. I think spread. it's like past fifty to sixty. A lot of men, I think fifty percent of men, yeah, could have you know prostate cancer. Yeah, but, but prostate just, exactly. Yeah. Not necessarily um, dangerous prostate cancer, just yeah, you know, just the mutation there the mutation, that happens, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, but that's a pretty wild but number. It's Fifty percent. So one in two men. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. It's to like think. one of us is gonna get it. You know, like it's, it's kind of <laughs> cracked to think about that. Let's think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So just let's go back to the key study I, I select for this. Um, so the study that they were looking at was in 1984, which is I know a long time ago, and kind of. You know, weird to think about the that. The year of in the big brother. Yeah, big brother. <laughs> so, yeah, they did a study with melanoma patients. I don't know if you know what melanoma is. Uh, uh, yeah, isn't it uh, skin? Yeah, cancer? so yeah. melanoma is skin cancer. Um, I mean, it's written there. I didn't even. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read it. I was <laughs> just testing you for no reason. <laughs> uh, so yeah, melanoma is skin cancer, and typically, uh, skin cancer is caused by UV radiation, mm -hmm. like a you know. Put your sunscreen. <laughs> exactly. The too much UV radiation at a certain area could be bad and could cause skin cancer. Yeah. Funny anecdote. Not a funny anecdote, but anecdote for okay. you guys. One of my cousins, when we were younger, he we, we went for a trip down to the US, Virginia Beach. Okay. And he was like three years old. He got two sunburns mm. on the same area and the Oh yeah, and that. then the third one it became black like the skin kind of almost looked like it was rotting then we went to the doctor and he said if if you get another sunburn here you will develop skin cancer in this area my cousin was three years old so that, you know that's really yeah bad. wear your sunscreen oh yeah yeah it's very important but but if i can add on that like i've heard that when you're a child up until you know you become an adult if you get like a severe sunburn your chances of getting skin cancer like i think multiply by like two or yeah. more like in the future you are even more prone to get skin cancer if you got a really severe skin burn so yeah it's very important especially for kids since they have a very sensitive skin even though they're like no nah, i don't want it no you gotta yeah slather on <laughs> yeah so it's so, important anyways yeah. yeah so they did like a study where they they analyzed people that were you know that had skin cancer and some of them didn't mm. 
And funny enough, so, some of them actually still develop skin cancer in areas that were not affected by the sun. Okay. okay. And the reason for that was because they had elevated amounts of stress. So it's possible that even without excessive UV radiation, you could still be prone to skin cancer if your skin, your stress levels are high. So you would think it's just, you know, UV radiation. So is it like particularly skin cancer or you just picked the oh, example? I just picked an example from the book, but... It could, could be, be any other cancer anything. that can develop yeah, because yeah, of... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. There's a really good part of the book. This, this one kind of blew my mind, to be honest. Uh, they were talking about uh, uh, lung cancer. Okay. And uh, they, they had like a control group. <coughs> and most of them developed um, some type of lung cancer, even though they weren't smoking necessarily. So it's like really weird. Oh, and the reason yeah, okay, why okay. they developed lung cancer is because they had elevated amounts of stress in their life. Which is bizarre, yeah. Yeah, it was really weird. Obviously, smoking's bad, but you're even more at risk to getting lung cancer if you smoke and you're stressed. And you're stressed. But yeah. if you just smoke, potentially you might not get it. <laughs> Which is crazy, yeah. <laughs> when we're like, don't smoke, don't smoke, but yet we see stress as a bigger... <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Like, the, the control group that, that had both that just smoked and just had and had smokers and stress yeah that group got i think it was i, I don't want to say the numbers and screw it up but like a way higher chance to develop lung cancer and this was a control group that was analyzed for like 60 years Man. so like yeah, yeah they, they followed them their whole life yeah and then at the end like m most of the people that had said like we are stressed and we're also smokers were the group that almost all had lung cancer and some of them had also died from it as well wow it's crazy yeah i mean just shows the extent of the damage the stress can do yeah exactly so not just just because you smoke doesn't mean you're gonna get it but obviously don't don't smoke, but obviously but. i mean these are all basically factors that exactly. increase probability like disease and your health it's just you know what's the probability how are you increasing your probability and exactly. it seems here that stress is a big it's weird because you would think that smoking is the one that would cause it like the you know, most the most but yeah based on some of the information in this book maybe not maybe stress so i think it showed patients that would just stress develop the lung cancer no they, both of the the control groups smoked. oh they both smoke yeah. but the ones who but smoked and, and had were stress, stress oh, okay. were way more likely to get it okay okay and I some see. of them that were smokers did not get it at all but all of them that were stressed and smoked all got it and some okay. of them died oh okay so yeah i mean it just shows like the combination exactly the combination is way worse is but way yeah more. smoking is a common factor in both of those it's so don't smoke basically yeah i guess if you don't smoke and you're just stressed i don't think you're necessarily going to get lung right. cancer but obviously other things can happen like exactly skin cancer yeah yeah so many other things um, yeah, so the second case study I wanted to talk about is reflux disease, and I kind of highlighted earlier. Mm -hmm. And the way this kind of works is that, um, like, how does how does the brain, you know, affect the amount of reflux you have, right? It's kind of a weird concept. Like, it's the stomach, right? You would think, oh, you know, there's acid in the stomach. It just but, yeah. comes up, right? <laughs> Not really. But. So, basically, uh, when there's a stress response in the body, we have, like, a... a V vagus nerve i think vagus it's hard to pronounce but vagus nerve yeah. vagus nerve i yeah. think um which basically it's a nerve that sends a signal down to your intestinal uh, tract to basically relax certain muscles at the bottom of the esophagus and when those muscles are relaxed that's when the the acid could creep up and then go up in the cool. esophagus oh, okay okay so so why does it um relax the muscles again because they they call it this type of uh, pain tolerance so the more you're stressed the sorry pain threshold okay so the more you're stressed the um the lower your pain threshold becomes okay okay so if you lower your pain threshold this will basically relax your your muscles um in the sphincter or your sphincter muscles okay. i think um with lower amounts of stress basically it's a bit weird. But. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, okay, so when you're stressed, when you have high amount of stress, then the inside, uh, 
that's esophageal sphincter relaxes yeah. as a response. Okay. But and this is caused by a lower, a lower pain, pain, pain threshold. threshold. Yeah. Okay. With is combined with excessive relaxation. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, that's how it's caused and that's how it's related to stress. Honestly, I feel like this one uh, paired yeah. with asthma is one that um, like stress is the probably the biggest factor that causes this. Yeah. Um, more than like IBS. IBS, uh, which is like irritable, irritable bowel, bowel syndrome. Yeah. Um, that, that one is pretty much stress that contributes to that disease entirely. Hmm. They don't even know why that happens other than stress. Okay. So, and this one is kind of related to IBS in a weird way where like, we don't know why necessarily it does happen that way, but it does happen when stress is there. They know that there's one factor. There's one factor. Obviously there probably is other factors, but IBS, the main major factor is stress for at least they recognize that one. Okay. Um, Interesting. And this one too. Yeah, I mean, IBS, I've heard about it, and I know a family member that has it, and it's just always such a mystery. It's weird. Nobody it's, has no No one idea. really understands it. It's it, like... It's just, why is your, you know, intestines acting up <laughs> like that? They just don't get it. Yeah. But, you know... It's like one day you'll be, like, constipated, and then the next day you'll have diarrhea. Like, yeah. it makes no sense. Just That's kind of what IBS place. is. It's just, yeah, it's just like a severe malfunction of your gut system. And yeah. But but that's why I'm thinking like you know stress should be studied so much more. It it does. It should be yeah. Yeah, because of how much role it has in so many of these diseases. Yeah, I know. For, personally, like when I go through like stressful parts, like in my life, like stressful days or whatever, mm. like I could tell that I'm gonna feel worse. Yeah, like I will feel worse. Mm. My my condition is gonna get worse. I know. Oh. Like. So it just doesn't help your condition. Yeah, it doesn't. No. So and that's kind of the reason why I quit my job because this <laughs> shit was getting out of hand a little bit. So. Yeah, you were like feeling that physical tension too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that it was a bit of both, but yeah, a bit of yeah, the yeah. internal, internal, and the. So yeah. Mm. So that's the uh, interesting the one. Yeah. Gerd. <laughs> Gerd. Yes. Weird name. <laughs> yeah. Did you hit your mic when I said it this time? Or? Oh, no, not this time. Yeah, <laughs> before I banged it really hard. Yeah. So the last one, mm. um, ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory disease. We kind of mentioned that before. And stress basically causes abnormal amounts of inflammation. Yeah. And the reason that is, is the central nervous system is the one that actually triggers um, these inflammatory responses. So, you know, remember how we looked at the PNI system earlier? And stress could compromise one of those systems. Mm -hmm. And if the nervous system is compromised, then, you know, one of its triggers and responses to that would, you know, okay, let me create inflammation as a stress response. And then you have excessive inflammation in the bowel and your, in your gut. Okay. And that could cause, you know, ulcered, um, uh, oh. parts of the colon. Yeah. Ulcers are like, uh, inflammation yeah, bleeding or, or like bleeding. bleeding yeah yeah is it tearing like inside not tearing but just like i think it's just you know parts that kind of bleed that and, start bleeding yeah yeah oh. so yeah which is not good yeah and interestingly enough the gut actually i read this in the book the gut actually has its own neurotransmitters mm. well that's why you know the whole saying the gut feeling yeah exactly that's where it comes from that's where it comes from yeah, yeah. so like you know you would think that you know i didn't know that i actually like it was kind of new to me when mm -hmm. i read it um you know like you would think neurotransmitters are in your brain but yet you, know, you like have dopamine and whatever yeah. the classic dopamine <laughs> always comes back to dopamine <laughs> yeah um yeah but you actually have some in your gut that you know trigger it, it, certain responses as i well. mean i've heard yeah the gut referred as to like your second brain you know just yeah another exactly nervous system down there because and i and i and i believe that yeah it's, i do 100 there's just so much that you feel in your gut you know when people say i have a gut feeling this is gonna go bad is because there's a response there yeah, yeah. it's true yeah and that's so interesting and yeah so basically stress would compute contribute to um ulcerative colitis by these stress responses, inflammation. Um, is that why, you know, when we're stressed, you know, we want to go to the bathroom? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it probably is a response in that area, I guess. I guess. I well, well, I've heard, yeah, I think it's like the, the adrenaline rush that makes you want to, you know, poop, basically, because it's like the f uh, fight or flight response that yeah. kicks in. Kind of like coffee makes you want to poop. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not as stressful. Uh... Well, I mean, caffeine does release, I think it does is release it? adrenaline, yeah. Oh, adrenaline. Oh, okay. You yeah. know what? Oh, maybe. Yeah. But, but yeah, but obviously when you're stressed as well, you're like ready to... Exactly. Ready to what? shit. <laughs> Ready to shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so that was the last little case study. Um, interesting stuff for sure. Mm. So, you know, you know. Now so we're enough. gonna get back to the ways to reduce stress. So, do you have to, any tips or advice to mitigate stress? Uh, my own, yeah. Um, basically. Okay, maybe one I could say is, uh, you know, stay away from people that create unnecessary stress. That's the best one. <laughs> I think that's, you know, one that a lot of people in our day and age are kind of realizing, you know, the whole, like, stay away from toxic people. And yeah, it is, it is true. You know, if someone doesn't add value to your life that only brings drama and unnecessary conflict and just things to argue about and just create a needless stress, then... You know, try to get away from those sort sorts of people. Yeah. Um, because because yes, I do think um, this was from like a podcast that I listened of this uh, expert on sleep. I forgot what his name was. So Steve Matt, Matt Walker. Something? No Hoffer. No, oh, I forgot what his name was. But anyways, he's like a really you know big. He's not like an expert as in I don't think he studied in sleep, but he has learned so much that he has so much knowledge on sleep. But anyways, it's like one advice that he gave in just in life was just the your relationships that you have with people will influence so much of your health. A hundred percent. So I mean. uh, just just the way, you know, like, uh, you know, what sort of lifestyle you have, what you eat, what you drink, uh, you know, do you exercise enough? Do you, you know, take care of yourself? If people in your life bring a lot of stress and influence you in bad ways, then it's just going to deteriorate your health. So. Yeah, I mean, down the line, that would probably just cause more stress, right? And that's probably why you're not having good sleep. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why I was saying. He Like the, the host of the podcast said, if there's one tip that you can give for people to have better sleep, he's like, have better relationship with people. <laughs> Which people would be like, huh, really? Okay. Yeah, it, it seems like a weird piece of advice, but I mean. For sleep. It makes know. sense, though. But it makes sense because he says at the end of the day, that's going to be your biggest influence for you to, you know, sleep early, you know, eat well, you know, cut the phone, you know, before bed, things of that sort. So, but yeah, that's one tip. Yeah. The, the people in your life, um, I guess you've written some here, like exercise, obviously yeah. is a good way to, good way. uh, also reducing emotional repression right hmm. so you know keeping emotions bottled up yeah yeah that's one, of, that's one of the worst ones i think because you know some people could be keeping secrets for years for years and years yeah and that's what eats them up and that's what literally causes diseases which it yeah. sounds so it sounds so innocent right oh you know i don't want to say this to to anyone like i don't want to i don't need to tell this information to anybody they don't need to know but you're literally how i'm feeling you're literally killing yourself. killing yourself by doing that. Basically. Yeah, yeah, you are. I think that's that's a really big one too. And I know like my family, like my mom, you know, she can be one that keeps it a lot inside. But, you know, you need to learn to express it and talk it out. And especially if you're like in a romantic relationship, this can be a big issue too. You know, for years and years and years and years, you keep it, you keep it. And then one day the person explodes because it's been bottled up so much. But that creates a lot of chronic stress that, you know, you repress, you repress because you don't want to deal with the potential, you know, acute stress that might happen. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. People are scared of like this, you know, brief period of like, yeah, there's a lot tension. of tension and stress going on, but it's better to pass through the storm than, you know, walk through the barren land, you know, with nothing. With nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's so, one way up. Yeah, meditating as as well. I think is a good way. Uh, to... yeah. I th I think meditation though, like everyone, I think does it in different ways. Yeah, it doesn't have uh, to be the same. I mean, everyone uh, just does it differently. But meditating could be, 
just maybe being mindful basically yeah. just taking time just to like reflect and just be present and you know you don't need to do the whole <laughs> no. depends what you want to do i mean if pe some people are into that i guess um yeah my, i know my cousins are like super into like meditation and my cousin yeah. she went like five days in like a meditation seminar or something and like <laughs> okay yeah like i probably wouldn't do that but I know some people time, uh, do like silent retreats. I think they're that's called. That's what it was. Oh, that's what it yeah. was. Okay, I, I would kind of be down to like a silent retreat. Maybe. Hey, you know what? Like, it's. I'm sure it has some health benefits. I'm sure it would help to, to some degree to. I think so stress. too. Just, just to kind of lower, just sort of any stimuli, yeah. really. Because what's great about those things is that you know you you learn to put aside everything, like the phone. Uh, like all the toxic yeah. people in your life, uh, the bad food, like everything that could cause, you know, stress. You're just there. You're kind of, you know, present, present, and that's that's what it is. While you're there, that's the thing. Yeah, uh, like in our day and age, there's just so many different things that cause stress. Like little, you know, things. Oh, you have a task to do. You have a call. You have your job. You have your friends all texting. Oh, my girlfriend's calling. Oh, this. Blah, 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 you know, yeah. Just the, it all, all accumulates. It all adds up, and your brain is like an overload. So. That's yeah. why a silent retreat can be good to just, you know, de deconnect and yeah. stay away. So, yeah, that's a good way. Um, Anything else? Well, yeah, the one uh, that we missed, the avoid stressful jobs. Yeah, well, we kind of <laughs> said it. That's why, you know, um, just avoiding stressful people, jobs. But, but but I think I can elaborate a bit on that. And we've, we've talked about it together, but... The jabs, right? You know, everyone says get a jab, you know, find a jab, you know, go into a career. It's not like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was, I was trying to kind of subconsciously imitate George Carlin as well, the comedian. Oh, he said, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. just has their jabs and they just want to go to work. And, but, you know, just for the sake of, you know, pursuing a career, more money, success, quote unquote, you know, is it? you know, to the detriment of your own health, you know, is it worth it? You know, a lot of people are like, man, that guy's a billionaire. He's a millionaire. He's a this and that, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, they are. They're CEOs. They're big, you know, decision-making people, but to what cost, you know, we never think, you know, they have millions, but are they going to die sooner than later or exactly, you know, they might not live long. They might have a lot of money, but not live long. So what's the sacrifice you want to do? That's what we need to choose. Right. Yeah. I mean, is it really worth, you know, investing all that time on your financial needs and, you know, your your the job and, and career, but then your health just kind of slowly falls down the drain? You yeah. Know? That's why, like, you know, to do a little tangent with the whole grinding and hustle culture of, like, 24-7, you know, one of those proponents is, I don't know if you've heard of him, Gary Vee. Have you heard of him? No. Okay. Well, he's like a kind of, you know, like 40-year-old man who has like a media company and he always gives talks about, you know, guys, you got to grind, you got to grind, you got to post on Insta, you know, social media, you got to get a following, you got to, you know, go after it. You know, your 20s, forget it. You know, it's 10 years, no sleep, eating ramen, you know, just got to oh, grind at terrible. it. You know, that kind of advice where... He's just saying, you know, you have to go after it, but at the detriment of your health for like just for 10 years. And then after your 30s, you'll be, you know, set to become a millionaire. But I don't agree with that personally. I think, you know, life should be a balance. Yes, in life, you sometimes do sacrifice certain things to achieve certain things, you know, like everything is a sacrifice in life. Everything that you choose is, you know, okay, I'm sacrificing my time for this. But I think health is a good value to have and protect because if you don't have health what the hell are you gonna do exactly <laughs> if you don't have health you have nothing you have nothing really oh okay you want money or you're gonna die soon well <laughs> exactly like imagine you win the lottery and then like you die two weeks later like what was the point you know like, yeah ex well let's say yeah if they they should do like a thought experiment or, or just an experiment say okay we're giving you either Two million dollars or nothing, but if you get the two million, you're gonna die in a week. What do you choose? You know, yeah, I, w I would say screw you to the million dollars. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't or care. or okay, a year. Still not enough. You know, like, there's probably no money that like why why would you put money on your own life? Basically, you know? yeah, exactly. You know, it's like no, I don't know what kind of sane person would pick that. So, yeah, it's like 
it's it's sort of the same way to say you know oh you might be a millionaire if you keep you know grinding and doing that sure but you're what out. if they give you immort uh, like a million dollars <laughs> for immortality <laughs> <laughs> what the dollar for one million dollars and you become immortal oh, would you wow. take it oh <sighs> yeah no i don't think so oh <laughs> uh, so you don't want to become immortal <laughs> No, <laughs> I think we had this, you we know, conversation. Uh, that was last year. Life, man, last year. Yeah. Can't imagine we're saying, yeah, we had a conversation last year. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so if you have no other, uh, uh, oh yeah, other tips? tips to reduce stress. Um, yeah, I guess uh, maybe manage the amount of tasks you have during a day, just the, the amount of responsibilities that you take on, and also maybe learn to delegate. I think a lot yeah. of people are like, yeah, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that, yeah, give me that. And I'm Decentralized command. <laughs> Jocko has entered the chat. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, I guess, you know, you could learn from like a military leader of how they delegate tasks and well, uh, Yeah, just objectives. basic organization, right? That's Just, yeah. You, it's important to have that i know note to self <laughs> <laughs> just organizing and, yeah but yeah exactly uh i think you know parents could you know uh, get use of that just to like delegate certain tasks and not just say yeah, yeah i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it and then just pfft. exactly yeah so anyways yeah any final thoughts close it off um final thoughts yeah just to you know be mindful of stress, chronic stress, especially, you know, the one that you don't really feel, but it's there. Um, you know, if you're, if you don't understand why you have a certain disease, then, you know, think about it, reflect, could it be a certain period in my life where I had a stressful situation or just throughout my life, life, have I felt, you know, something has always been adding up and I've been repressing in myself, you know, uh, I think people just could use, you know, of, being more aware self-aware of their own bodies yeah exactly just kind of to speak personally like i've had this happen to me where you know a lot of uh, emotions were bottled up for a long time and there was a stressful period that i thought didn't have really you know that much meaning mm. but then after you know after the like all everything boiled down and the aftermath of all that then you know looking back years before years later I do see that there probably was a big relation with with stress and now i kind of regret not you know taking that into consideration yeah i but mean you were younger you, and you can't really you know yeah i'm not gonna sit here and be like yo why did i yeah why did my why 16 year old self or say, yeah you know teenage 20 self? year old self like not handle this better well look like you know things happen and you just gotta be mindful in the future about situations that will happen stress is inevitable it's gonna happen yeah that's the thing like prepare for the future that it's not gonna be all you know nice and dandy exactly uh, so yeah just live a balanced life and be mindful of those stressful situations and don't be paranoid about them and when they happen they happen and you just you know you handle them as they come that's that's all you could do really yeah you try to find ways to manage it reduce it delegate if you can not overload yourself uh because that's the thing you know like people again think oh i want to be successful yeah, 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 yeah okay but to be successful sometimes you need to grind a lot and put a lot of you know effort and to the sacrifice you know unfortunately of your health so exactly you need to uh you know keep that in the back of your mind yep all right so well, yeah that's it for Thank today you. uh Wraps you guys yeah you guys could uh, check out our podcast on our youtube channel uh curiousaholic uh, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel. If you like the video, let us know what you're curious about. You could also uh, watch our podcast on, you know, Spotify, Stitcher, <laughs> Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, anywhere that you, you you know, you watch your, your favorite, favorite streaming, streaming shows or yeah. wherever. So, yeah, don't be too stressed out about, uh, <laughs> you know, where you, where you could find our podcast. We're, we're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, that's a good way to tie it <laughs> oh, we have to tie out the outro somehow <laughs> to the topic yeah but yeah don't be too stressed you know keep it chill and, yeah uh, stay curious as usual yep and uh we'll catch you guys next time all right buy our merch <laughs> <laughs> buy our merch <laughs> uh, we still don't have Not any. yet <laughs> oh, yeah maybe one day who knows yeah maybe a curious right, mug <laughs>
Clay is out. All right. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.